Okay, let's get going here. Uh, good evening and welcome to the November 5th, 2014 hearing of the City of Brookhaven Planning Commission. I'm Stan Siegel and I'll be presiding this evening. Uh, this public meeting has been called on matters pursuant to the Brookhaven Zoning Ordinance and specified on tonight's agenda. The November 5th, 2014 meeting okay. is called to order. Let's get going here. Uh, good evening and welcome to the... All right, well, if you didn't hear me, they're going to repeat it. <laughs> it's going to be a long evening. Was that you? There's a loop problem they oh. have. We that. All right, it's fixed. So, <laughs> as a way of introduction... Uh, I'm going to call the roll and have each commissioner acknowledge their presence. Uh, just raise your hand so everybody knows who you are. Uh, commissioner Chris Boddicker. Here. Uh, commissioner Shannon Cameron. Present. Uh, this is alphabetical. Commissioner Rob Francor. Here. Commissioner John Funny. Present. Uh, commissioner Bert Levy. Present. And Commissioner Caitlin Miller. Present. Okay, let the record indicate that we have seven me members are present, and we have a quorum, and we're going to proceed. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask everybody to either silence or turn off your cell phones. <clears throat> Let's see, who do we have here this evening? We've uh, just so, again, little introductions. We've got the director of uh, planning for the city of Brooklyn, director of community development, Mr. Ben Song. You raise your hand, Ben, so they know who you are. We've got the uh, uh, public works is uh, Richard Meehan, and one of our city planners, Rhonda Smith, is right there. And Kelly Reynolds will be taking down every word we say. Uh, okay, there should be copies of the agenda and other related documents in the back of the room. If you'll be making a comment this evening, I hope you've picked up a comment card and turned it in over here to Kelly. We'll need that before you, you come up and speak. Back of the room. Uh, Brad's back there? Yes. Yeah, there we go. In case anything, if we get another looping, he gets to, you know. Uh, the Planning Commission is established by the Code of Ordinances of the City of Brookhaven. <clears throat> Our purpose is to conduct public hearings on land use, zoning changes, code text amendments, and other related matters. The Planning Commission's actions are not a final determination regarding the matters that are brought before us, but rather a recommendation to the Mayor and the Council on the viewpoint of this commission. So we're going to listen to what everybody has to say. We're going to make a recommendation that's going to go to the city council who will make the final decision on anything. I'd also like to say that in making our recommendations, uh, this commission does everything to we can to balance the land use with the interests of the applicant, the neighboring community, and the entire city of Brookhaven. Uh, all of us are intimately familiar with the city. We all live here. We're all your neighbors and and we live right here. And the decisions that we make this evening or recommendations we make this evening affect us just like they you know, affect you. So not everyone's gonna agree with what we come up with tonight. Uh, just know that we're doing the best we can and we're gonna come up with a recommendation based on uh, what we hear and what we see this evening. Uh, let me tell you, before we get into the, uh, the agenda, uh, let me go through, for those of you who have not been here before, let me kind of go through the process a little bit uh, so you understand what's going to happen and how it's going to work. Uh, we'll take up the agenda items before us from right off, you know, from the agenda. Uh, we're working on me talking. Uh, then we'll have the staff will present a summary of the agenda item. And it'll be their recommendation to us and the reasons for them, uh, you know, f and reasons for those recommendations. Uh, then we'll open the public hearing. We'll ask the applicant or their, or their representative uh, to come up. And normally they'll, they'd have 10 minute, they'll have 10 minutes uh, to speak, of which they can use all of it up front. They could talk for two minutes and say, I want to reserve eight. Uh, I've been told tonight, and we had a little discussion, about it, but I've been told tonight we're going to deal with two applications, uh, RZ, 14-16 and RZ 14-17, uh, the Rockhaven Homes application together. So to help you plan ahead, we're going to give the applicant 20 minutes. You know, we'll start with 20 minutes, 10 minutes for, you know, I mean. So the applicant or the representative will get 20 minutes. <coughs> um, we'll then ask uh, for those who are in support of the application 
to come up and speak and kind of help us understand why you're supportive of it. And, and those in support will get 20 minutes. Then we'll go on to those who are opposed to the application and that group will have 20 minutes as well. Now we're gonna ask everybody, uh, we're gonna try to get as many people in as we can. If we have to extend beyond that, we will, but you know, we, we, if somebody, I mean, it's okay for you to come up if you're the sixth person in line and the previous five people have expressed your point of view. I mean, it's your time. If you wanna come up and say it again, please come up and say it again, but it's also okay to come up and state your name and your address and say, I'm opposed or I'm in support of, and I agree with the person, you know, that, you know, this person's name. It's okay. You can do it either way, and we're okay. And we're going to limit any one speaker to, to three minutes, and that's just courtesy because we're trying to get as many people in, get your point across again, be succinct, and, and let us know. We're trying to understand. We're trying to understand all points of view so that when we deliberate, uh, we can come up with, you know, to our best abilities, the, uh, you know, a good recommendation for the, uh, for the city council. Okay, we're going to also understand that zoning matters are emotional. So no <laughs> applauding, no jumping up and down, no cat calls, no whooping. Uh, either way, you know, we'll, <laughs> we, uh, you know, I mean, you can let us, we, we know who's here and who's not here. Uh, we'll then close the, the, the uh, public hearing. And this commission will deliberate. We'll have an opportunity at that point to ask questions of the staff, the applicant, and anyone who has spoken. If you haven't spoken, you, you know, we have, so is anyone who has who's come up. So we'll then take as much time as we need to feel comfortable in our, um, in our recommendation. So, um, did I cover everything, I think? You could. Got it all? You'd think after two years I'd have this down, but I don't. We don't. And, uh, yes, you do. <laughs> <we're> <laughs> so, with that, first order of business tonight is approval of minutes, approval of September 29th, 2014 Planning Commission work session meeting minutes. Do I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I would like to move that we approve the September 29th, 2014 Planning Commission work session meeting. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. <laughs> motion a second. Any discussion on it? Nope. All those in favor of approving the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Second item approval with October 1st, 2014, Planning Commission regular meeting minutes. I'll entertain a motion on that one. Good job. Somebody Mr. Chair, I would approve. <laughs> I would I would move that we approve the October 1st, 2014 Planning Commission regular meeting minutes. All right, great. Do we have a second on I'll that? I'll second. And we have a we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor of approving those the, the minutes of October the first signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, great. Approved. Uh, Mr. Song, any any organizational procedural items from you? Uh, no organizational and procedural items at this time. Okay. Anybody up here have anything that we need? Um, I guess I'll make a quick one that, uh, although it'll be, be, be published, that we've moved. In the past, we've had normal work sessions on the Monday prior to the meeting, like we had a work session about this on Monday. And I guess starting next week when we have a special called meeting on the, on the application for annexation, for Children's Health Care and Executive Park. It's here November the 12th, so it's next tu Tuesday night. And we'll have our work session. Next Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry? Next Wednesday. Yeah, next Wednesday. So, and we'll have our work session at 5 o'clock, and then from there forward through 2015, we're going to move work sessions to the same day so we don't have to be here twice and everything will be fresh in our minds. So, for any of you who keep track of that, which I can't imagine, but. <laughs> All right. If not, let's move into unfinished business. Uh, first item on the agenda is RZ 14-11, Haven Real Estate Investments, a rezoning request from R75 to RA8. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you recall, um, this traveled over, the case traveled over to the City Council. It was remanded back uh, in the hopes that the applicant would work with uh, staff to come up with a redesign uh, in terms of the site plan associated with the rezoning request from R75 to RA8. Uh, unfortunately, no uh, revision to the site plan was... Uh, uh, ever completed. The applicant has submitted a letter uh, requesting withdrawal uh, without prejudice of the request. 
And I don't believe the applicant is here. Oh, oh there yep, she is. She is here tonight. All right. Thank that, you. That that's is it. it. So we'll open the public hearing. Do you would like to say something? Come nope. <laughs> you can just say hello and all right. <laughs> Do we have any comment cards? No, sir. All right. So we'll close the, close the public hearing and I'll entertain a, uh, a motion on this to, I guess, approve the um, request for, yeah, you know, or whatever. I move that on RZ 14-11, the council permit the withdrawal of the rezoning application without prejudice. Okay, we have a motion. Do I have a second on that? I'll Sorry. second. All right, who, who was that so they can get it on record? Mr. Okay. Commissioner Levy. Yeah, there we go, we got it. Um, any discussion? All right, all those in favor of withdrawal without prejudice, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh. Good seeing you. <laughs> all right. They're not all this easy, folks. Um, <laughs> okay, the next items on the agenda of unfinished business, because this was before us uh, last month, and it is uh, within our procedures for the Planning Commission itself to accept a, a uh, deferral for 30 days, and it didn't, so this did not go to the City Council. It came before us, there was a request for a deferral, we approved that deferral, so it's now back before us. So this is uh, RZ 14 dash, and we're going to hear them together, RZ 14 dash 16, Rockhaven Homes, LLC, um, for rezoning request, and RZ 14 dash 17. So with that, we'll get the you're jumping the gun on this one. We'll get the, our Director of Community Development, Mr. Song. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, the request uh, is being heard concurrently for RZ 1416 and RZ 1417. Uh, the subject property is located at the intersection of Oak Forest Drive and Ashford Delmody Road. RZ 1416 is specific to Tract A. Uh, let me see. Tract A, which is the uh, the parcel to the south, uh, RZ 1417 is related to Tract B, which is the parcel to the north. Uh, tract A, the applicant is proposing um, to locate 36 townhome units. Uh, tract B, which is to the north again, the applicant is proposing to locate 12 townhome units for a total of 36 units, uh, which would be an aggregate density of 7.64 units per acre. If we were to break it down further in terms of the individual uh, parcel, uh, the tracks, and the associated density. Uh, track B, again, to the north, it will be 12 lots, which is 7.46 acres. Uh, track A would be uh, 24 lots for 7.73 units per acre. Uh, based upon the location and its proximity uh, to existing o &I uses and also to the uh, regional center uh, character area, staff felt that the uh, pr proposed use of uh, townhome units uh, would act as a transitional uh, use and transitional development from the major thoroughfare of Ashford Domedy Road extending into Oak, uh, Oak Forest Hill subdivision. Uh, and based upon that review, staff has recommended uh, approval of RZ 1416 as well as RZ 1417 uh, with 16 conditions uh, listed in, your, in the staff report that has been shared. Uh, staff again will stipulate to the report and to the conditions as stated. Thank you. Uh, ben, would you just to be Make it sure. I mean, I think we all know that, but just in case, uh, there were two site plans in here because it was original one. There were revised one. Yes. And in our in our packet, it is page. It's the the new. So the old site plan is shown on page fifty eight. But the new one, the one that we're we're addressing. The, the new one is on page eighty seven. Okay. I just so make sure we're right. The originally they were showing forty two total units. Now they're showing 36. Right. Uh, they did show additional separation of uh, proposed townhome units right. from uh, abutting residential property lines. Um, so again, I believe the separation is near uh, around 50 to 60 per, uh, 50 feet, 50 to 60 feet from the property lines. Um, and I actually one other point of note in regards to the uh, the variances that we discussed during work session. I looked into it a little bit further. Uh, they did show a variance on track A, which is on the lower end, uh, along Oak Forest Drive. Technically, that is not needed. I believe that was still a remnant from the original RM100 rezoning request. 
Um, the rezoning or the variance from Ashford Dunwoody Road for track day as well, the applicant, I think, on the site plan has referenced a reduction from 20 feet to 5 feet. 20 feet is actually associated with, again, the older uh, rezoning request to RM100. Technically, the required side yard set or the required setback from Ashford Dunwoody Road in this case within the R8 zoning would be 15 feet. Uh, but I wanted to point out in terms of the staff report, uh, if you look at condition number two as shared during work session, uh, we are looking to condition the entire site and all frontages uh, along Oak Forest Hill or Ashford Dunwoody Road to maintain a minimum setback of 20 feet. And that's on page 122, right, Ben? To be clear, because we've had so many of these. Sorry? What page are Oh, the, the condition? Yeah. The condition is shown on page 50. <coughs> condition number two. Again, bear with us because we have the original, we have the, you know, and we, we believe we're all on, on the page one, two, same two. page. This is making sure we're on the same page. About page 50. Are they the same? Let me get to, you said 122? Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, well, because that's our, remember, there are two, two packages. Okay. Right? They are the same. And they're the okay. same. As yeah. long as they're the same. Okay. Yes, it, it's the same. Thank you. Same report. Okay. okay. All right. Anything else? No, sir, that's it. All right. Thank well, you. in that case, we'll open the public hearing, and I'll let you introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dillard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I'm Doug Dillard with Wives of Noack, Curry, and Wilco. We represent the applicant. Um, the site plan that we filed on October the 29th is the site plan that we're asking for here, okay? So I, I don't know where that is in your packet. We, we've got, we got the right page. Yeah, it's, it. it's 36 lots, and the right. overall density is 7.64, okay? Um, and uh, I'm going to state very briefly in my opening and reserve my remaining for rebuttal uh, that we support staff's recommendation uh, and that um, the uh, site plan which we have provided uh, is the site plan that we ask that uh, you condition your your rezoning to. Uh, we also uh, ask that uh, as a part of the October 29th, and I'll go through that supplemental, we showed some examples of townhomes adjacent to um, minor arterial streets, and that's what Ashford Art Dunwoody is. It is not a residential street. So, um, we ask that you look at that in light of the current comprehensive plan, what's across the street, what's adjacent to this property, and the overall area, sub-area that this property is located in. With the understanding that this property has remained vacant, basically, or rented substandardly, over the last 25 years. And we submit this application to you as a solution to what has been a neighborhood problem. And uh, with that, I will reserve my remaining time for rebuttal. Which will be about 18 minutes. <laughs> yeah, you got it, okay. Um, okay, so. Rough, do you have roughly how many comment cards you have overall? Well, about? first I have one in support. Okay, and then about how many? Just curious. All right, that's I can tell from the county. All right, uh, so about who, twelve in okay. opposition. Okay. I just want to check, you know, on time, make sure everybody's going to have plenty of time to talk. So, so who's first? Uh, we'll call the uh, person who's in support or the group that's in support. Sure, it's Christopher Harris. Chairman, huh? he's, he's the client, so uh, I don't think we need, I'll we'll go. reserve his time for rebuttal also, <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, you're not gonna be able to reserve his, I mean, if he, they, you know, you come up and if, they, if they'd like to speak, he can, you know, if, they, if not, that's okay too, I mean, I, I, I for the record, so that someone, yeah. he, if I need him, I'll call on him, okay? okay. Thank you. <laughs> We're just trying to do, well, trying to do this right. Uh, okay, you want to, then we will um, begin listening, uh, hearing uh, those who are uh, in opposition. 
And uh, Ben, would you call the first one? Clay Robertson. Can, can I ask a point of order first? I, I believe I have people that are deferring their time to me. I'm just trying to clarify how much time I have to speak. Um, I mean, you have three. You have, you know, you have three minutes. Three minutes. To, I mean, every individual has. I know, but what I'm saying is, there's individuals who put in comment cards who want to give me their time. Um, there'll be plenty of. There, I, I would ask that if you have people who put comment cards in. I think we kind of come up with that. You can't read the read the comment into the record. So, you know, if somebody's got a comment card, they'll need to come up, state their name, who they are, just tell us they're you know, opposed, that's okay. And if there's more than, if there's time left at the end, you can come back at the, at the you know, come back after that. Okay, well, I'll just get through what I can and okay. we'll see where that, where that yeah. goes. Like, well, my name's Clay Robertson and I'm we here. We need to make sure everybody gets a chance. And I know you're saying you're, everybody's deferring to you. We don't know that without, until okay. we hear from them, so. If you're deferring to me, would you please stand up? No, that's all right. That's okay. Just give us okay. the three minutes. And all right. Okay. <laughs> Let's start. My name is Clay Robertson. I live at 4269 Ashwoody Trail. Uh, my wife and I are homeowners in Oak Forest Hills. Um, we, we'd first of all like to thank you. In, in the risk of wasting my time, I want to thank you for your service. We all recognize the difficult decision you have to make, balancing homeowners' interests and the interests of a developer. But I would submit to you, this is not a tough case. No matter how much smoke screen they throw up, I, I want to make two points to you. Um, the first is I want to appeal to your, sensitive, your sensibilities, and that would be, if I can throw up a couple pictures really quick, I'll just put it right on top. Is, is, that, is that working for us? Okay. Well, you can't really see that well, but that's Oak Forest Hills as it currently exists. Oak Forest Hills. This is what is proposed. I don't know what I would call flip that. It one, flip it 180 if you would. For, there you go. Thanks. I guess I would call that Oak Fortress Hills. It's just missing a moat and a, and a drawbridge. <laughs> but, you know, we, we can talk about trees and traffic and schools, and those are all good arguments, and I would commend you to read all of our written arguments that we've made, but we don't have time to talk about everything. So I want to talk about what really matters, and that's money, economics. That's really what's driving all of this. Um, and the factors to be considered by the commission are whether the property to be affected by the zoning proposal has a reasonable economic use as currently zoned. And somebody's going to have to explain to me what rented substandardly is. Either a property's rented or it's not. There's no substandard renting. You, 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 you say what the rent is and you either pay it or you don't. All of the homes on the subject property, the six homes, are currently rented. And several out neighbors, I could call Alan Cole, Marie Cole, a lot of my neighbors who've lived there for 40 years can tell you they've been consistently rented for decades. So to say they're substandardly rented, that's just a falsehood. The homes have never been, in all those years, never been listed for individual sale. If a property doesn't have a reasonable economic use as it's currently zoned, wouldn't you have tried to sell it or unload it? it obviously, those homeowners have felt that they could rent those homes and occupy those homes for 50 years so they are, there is a reasonable economic use. It's disingenuous to argue otherwise, and the best evidence of that is within the past year, one of those homes had a tree fall on top of it and crush the home. Anybody who drove down Ashford Dunwoody Road saw it. And that homeowner, instead of taking a total loss and pocketing a check, if there was no reasonable economic use, that's what they would have done. Instead, they rebuilt the home. It's a pretty little home there. They spent their own money to rebuild that home. That is the best evidence that there's a reasonable economic use. The homeowner himself would have to say it because he spent his own money on it. There are new single-family homes being built all over Oak Forest Hills, Canterbury Hills, Nancy Creek Heights. In fact, Rock Haven Homes built the one right next to me. They sold it this year, so they can't argue that you can't buy a lot in, Rock, in Oak Forest Hills and sell it as long as you buy it by the lot, by the property, at fair market value. And that's what we got going on here. This is circular logic. These, home, these property owners have lumped these properties together, and they're allowing the developer to come to you and say, and we've heard it at all the meetings, we just can't make single-family homes work because it's going to cost too much to develop for single-family lots. That is circular logic. That would be like me saying, I'm going to sell my property to somebody for $50 million, and the only thing they can build there now is a skyscraper, so you've got to allow them to rezone it. The, answer is, the answer is... I apologize. Three minutes is up. 
No, finish up this. Okay. The answer is you did. I'll come back. You deny the rezoning and you tell the developer to go back to the table and meet with the property owners and make them sell their property at fair market value so that they can build houses that we'd all be proud of in our neighborhood. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me again your address. 4269 Ashwoody. 4269. Okay. Okay. And again, if there's time at the, you know, the other 20 minutes, we're going to give everybody enough time. So. Chris, ready? I'm Chris Reddy. I live um, at 4087 Shawnee Lane in the uh, Nancy Creek Heights neighborhood, which um, is adjacent to Oak Forest Hills. Um, we have approximately 125 homes in our neighborhood. Um, you know, it's kind of came about, we canvassed the neighborhood, talking to the neighbors to kind of feel out the tone throughout the uh, homes in our neighborhood. It was pretty much um, negative across the board. Um, you know, I'm sure everyone's going to go in tonight in depth, the, the reasons why, and, you know, traffic, um, the impact on the already stressed school system there. Um, I, I think that um, no one in our neighborhood, and I don't think anyone in this room, is naive enough to think that um, it'll never be built on. We know that something will happen. Um, we just, as far as our neighborhood goes, feel like that it could be done a little bit more tastefully than proposed in this plan. Um, and for that reason, our, um, our board has chose to take a stance on this for our neighborhood, um, for our association, and we do not support the current proposal um, or the current plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reddy. Reddy, is that what it was? Yes, sir. Chris, okay. Michelle Rutherford. I'm Michelle Rutherford. I live on Ashford Dunwoody. I am the immediate neighbor to this project in a single family home. I've been there since 1999. The address? I've, what's the address? 4089. I'm the immediate neighbor. Okay. There is a property between us, but that property does not have a house on it. I bought my house in 99. I've since had three children in that house. I have no problems living on Ashford Dunwoody in a single family house. Um, I appreciate that Doug Dillard has finally brought us a developer that wants to put residential properties and not commercial. Thank you. But what would be best for this development would be single family homes. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rutherford. Next. Alan Cole. If it, by the way, if it helps, if you've got a lot of people, if the, whoever's that you want to call the next, next thing can stand behind, up, just get ready. Who will they be after? Uh, I believe it's Noel Hoagie. Okay, just so you know afterwards. Okay, go ahead, Alan. Okay, Alan Cole, 4219 Ashwitty Trail. And we appreciate y'all uh -huh. listening to this. And I'm representing the Oak Forest Hills neighborhood. As a group, we stand united 100% against the zoning. Uh, it will change the character of our neighborhood. And the only reason they, they're going for this rezoning is money, and I don't understand. The homes are there. I've talked to five builders that would love to build single-family homes there, but they can't afford a million dollars an acre. The going value in our neighborhood is somewhere around 300, 400,000 an acre. So what we're doing is we're trying to rezone this to get somebody some more money, but it, it has nothing to do with viability. It'll build out a single family. And down the street, across the way, four homes were wrecked in the 70s and 80s. They built homes. They sell for two, 700,000 plus or minus. They've been on Ashford Dunley a long time, and that's, it's north of uh, Nancy Creek, but, but right around the school area. And then I hear the statement that Ashford Dunway is not a residential road, but once you leave, leave Perimeter Summit, it's all residential. And we have homes from at one time, one was in the million dollar range. I don't know if it still is, but they're expensive homes. The only ones left are these, and they've never been offered up for sale. If they had, I'm sure they'd have been bought, and you would see different homes sitting on it. So the only rezoning I'm looking at is, is they're applying to get rezoned so the value of their land will go up. It has nothing to do with us. It does not help the Oak Forest neighborhood. It would change our character totally. And if you look at, are we talking about just this? Do we have to come back for the smaller plant too? Am I just talking no, about no, the? both. Okay, we're talking about both. Because the small plant, That's why you have 20 minutes. the track B is basically in our subdivision. 
It's, it barely has a presence on, on Ashford Dunwoody. It's the cheapest to develop, so they're trying to put the highest, they're trying to put a lot of townhomes on it because it'll cost them nothing. That's their profit level. But there's currently a home on it that's in our subdivision. It sits pretty in our subdivision. Track that's in between has always been owned by the lady who owns the two homes up there. They're in, they're in executor states. I don't know the whole thing. There may be someone here to tell you that they got in an argument before I moved in, which was 42 years ago. And they said, you'll regret whatever happened in the garden club or something. <laughs> and it's been that way ever since. Because when I've gone up there campaigning or talking or they never, if you were from Oak Forest, they didn't talk to you. So that's been the issue at the corner. But, but rezoning it isn't the key to it. And our neighborhood stands against it 100%. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. I, and who's going to meet after well, this? Actually. Right. Yeah. And then the next one? Well, the next one who would, who would like to speak would be Dan Prieto. Okay. Just so you keep going. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm gonna... Noel Hoagie. I live at 4202 Candler Lake West. Um, I'm sort of adopted into Oak Forest Hills. I'm not really in any neighborhood, but I live in the area. Um, and I am opposed. I don't really have anything to say other than the fact that I have two young children and 36 townhomes would certainly add a lot of potential children into an already very overcrowded Montgomery Elementary, which is a stellar school that I'd like my children to go to. And that's a part of City of Brookhaven that I'm proud of. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hogan. Okay. Next person, speaker. Dan Prieto. <clears throat> and the one after that will be? I believe Brian Savori. Okay. And your last name again? Prieto. And I live at uh, 1454 Oak Forest Court. Uh, I have purchased a home there and gutted it, remodeled it, moved in two years ago. Couldn't be happier with the neighborhood. I enjoy the character of the neighborhood. Um, to reiterate some of the comments that we heard earlier, but to expand upon them, Rock Haven, even though they, in their filings with this commission, have said that there is no greater value of this land, they have not only built other homes within the community, they have come to you and asked for partition of currently existing lots so they could squeeze in additional homes into smaller lots. Um, one of the other points I would like to look to is the, uh, the student capacity. Um, student, uh, in the information sheets, it says students generated from proposed development four. Out of 48 townhomes, they've got, they can look through a crystal ball and see only four children living in 48 homes. I wish I'd have had them for the lottery last week. In addition to that, as far as vehicles, both of these will dump into the Oak Forest Home or Oak Forest Hills subdivision into an overcrowded uh, intersection as it is there's development that is being uh, discussed and planned etc across the street which is already going to increase the traffic volume I live in Oak Forest Hills I work at the Ravinia's just across uh, 285 on any given day it can take me 30 minutes to get home it's less than a quarter of a mile from or it's approximately a quarter of a mile from the Ravinia to the traffic light and it can still take 30 plus minutes um, Some of the other documents that were filed with this court spoke about uh, constitutional rights of the uh, petitioners, constitutional rights of the developer. Um, I took note of this for the simple fact that it appears to me boilerplate language that has been presented by the developer's attorneys. If you look through that, you will see that they have threatened or alluded to the fact that they could bring an action before the Gwinnett Superior Court. They couldn't even be bothered to to show this in the appropriate venue. That's how much they have thought this development has put into this, uh, into this petition that they have put before the ladies and gentlemen of this commission. I would encourage you to scrutinize what they have put forward because they themselves have said, we want you to consider what's to the left, what's to the right, what's across the street. Well, what's across the street is an additional plan multi-composition uh, multi development. From their own words, they have asked you to consider this. 
I ask that you consider not only what words are spoken here today, but the filings that have been made before this commission, and I would ask that you reject this zoning variance. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Priya. Brian Savori. That was close on my name. It's savory. Oh. Oh, sorry. I'm not an unsavory character, <laughs> but uh, I do like to cook and make some savory dishes. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, thank you so much for your time. Everybody always pronounces things the tougher way than that. There you go. <laughs> uh, I'd like to talk to you about three things tonight. Traffic, well, traffic and traffic, no. Traffic, water and sewer, and, and uh, the school system. When I come home at night from work, I can't get into my neighborhood. I know how tough uh, it is to, for, for everybody in Atlanta to, to uh, travel the interstates, but when you get off the interstate, you hope that you could get into your neighborhood. I can't. It takes me 10, 15 minutes to get from 285 to the turn lane uh, going into Ash for, uh, Oak Forest Drive. And, and that's with, with no development. With, with all these 40 plus homes and or 40 plus cars, really, uh, to addition, turning on to this, this uh, two lane street, one lane in each direction, both of those uh, developments from either side are gonna feed into that street. So when I get up in the morning and I have to sit through two or three cycles of lights now, can you imagine what it's gonna be like with 40 or 50 cars in addition coming out in the morning and coming home in the evening? So I, I, I don't want to add any additional traffic into our neighborhood and, and make it any worse than it already is for me to get home. Uh, the water and sewer infrastructure in this neighborhood, uh, our home is approximately 50 years old. That's when the uh, 50, 60 years, that's when it was developed and that's when the sewer system and the water system was put in place. These additional homes are gonna tap into that 50 plus year old sewer system. And, and I'm not an expert, but uh, I don't know how they can handle all that additional waste, waste water. Uh, and then I, I think some of my other uh, neighbors have, have talked about uh, the, the school system. Uh, when we first moved into this neighborhood, there were a lot of old folks like me with no kids. They'd already grown and gone. Today, uh, there were, I mean, last, last week, there were a bunch of trick-or-treaters running through the neighborhood. And, and I don't want any more cars potentially driving through that neighborhood because they can't get through on Ashford Dunwoody uh, to their home and jeopardizing those, those students or those kids and potential students for an already overcrowded Montgomery uh, Elementary. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Saber. I, I forgot to give you my address, didn't I? 4133 Oak Forest Drive. Thank you. <laughs> Ed Sullivan. Mr. Roberts, you can see why we have to make sure everybody gets a chance to speak. <laughs> Thank you all for letting me talk to you. I didn't wear a suit because I just don't wear a suit anymore. And your address? Lucky me. 4141 Ashworthy Trail. Okay. Been in the neighborhood 35 years. I live down the hill where the drainage problem is, <coughs> and then back it's on the lowest house in the neighborhood. My number one topic for me is drainage. I've talked to the planning commission or the people that does drainage, and they say, oh, it's all going to go the other way one or two bulldozers in the wrong direction or a change to the street will take all of that water into my yard, into my backyard, into all the yards behind me also. I have 27 houses in, from the streets that flow into my yard. Drainage is a major issue for me. And I know they're supposed to put buried, sept uh, buried pools and everything. It still gets drained out someplace. But if they just change the grade by accident, which can happen, I now got more street drainage. That's my number one topic. The other, uh, if I have four topics here, the other one is for 35 years, I didn't know I had a problem out in my neighborhood. I didn't know that area was a problem. That, it just came up today in Doug's Dark. It's a problem area for the neighborhood. I haven't recognized it at one. They don't mow the yard, but that's their choice, okay? Doesn't affect me any because my yard's mowed. Third thing is, is the, if I can use this little drawing here, this street, Oak Forest in this section, before the planter, is a narrow two-lane street with trees right next to it. This past month, <clears throat> the person that lives in this rental house 
had a two or three people had two or three cars parked in that street, just parked, which is legal. You can't get through it. So if we have more traffic coming in this way and they stop here, you're going back up traffic on Oak Forest. You won't be able to get to the neighborhood. This one will, will even congest this area here. I don't I don't like this these two roads at all. It just makes it very congested. Uh, not parking, entrance to the neighborhood. Right now, and I, the guy put his picture upside down, this is Oak Forest. We have trees all around. It is a forest back there. When the, when the uh, building gets in, we actually go between condos or townhomes. We have changed the whole character, how we move into our neighborhood. I no longer see trees, I see these buildings. And it's like I'm going into a commercial area first before I get home. I didn't, I didn't sign up for that when I bought the house. The house hadn't been that way for 35 years. The neighborhood's not that way. We're a neighborhood. And that's really all I've got. Thank you all very much. Right. I am opposed to it for those four reasons. Thank you, Mr. S Sullivan, right? Yes. Thank Eric Hawley. Thank you very much. Uh, my name's Eric Holly. I live at 1478 Ashwoody Court. I've been in the neighborhood approximately 10 years. And I'm sorry, tell me your name again. Eric Holly. Thank you. And um, I've only got really two points. I, first of all, I, I would like to say I agree with all the points that have been made in opposition. Um, but the points I would like to make is that the uh, developer has conveniently uh, suggested that there is a problem that needs to be solved and they're offering a solution to the problem. The problem is they never asked anyone, to my knowledge in the neighborhood, if they thought there was a problem or how that problem should be solved. And I think that kind of demonstrates their disdain for the, for the neighbors or disregard for the neighbors, uh, the, the, the people who live in my neighborhood. The other th uh, point I would like to make is that they have basically threatened the city with a lawsuit in excess of $2 million if they don't get their variance. And I feel that for, if for no other reason the board should reject their um, request for, a vari for this zoning because of that lawsuit threat. Because if, if developers get the feeling that they can bully the uh, city of Brookhaven around by threats of lawsuit, that will quickly become the new method of doing business in the, in the city of Brookhaven. And I feel that the, uh, it should be rejected, like I said, for, if no, for, for no other reason because of that threat of that lawsuit. Uh, and that's pretty much my two points. I thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Holly. Uh, ben, how many more cards do we have? Five more. About 10, 10 or 15. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We, and we've done this in the past. Usually it's 10 minutes instead of the 20 that we have. But we recognize that we, but we're going to do everything fairly. So if we give anybody, if we have more time to one side, it's going to have more time to, to the other. So be prepared to spend some time here. I mean, we need to hear everybody. So I'll entertain a motion. We uh, offered 20 minutes to the applicant 20 minutes to well we didn't have anybody who was you know 20 minutes to the applicant 20 minutes to those who support uh, if i'll entertain a motion to extend that for some period of time so we can get you know get some at least the last five people in or may not get all your three minutes but mr chair i would move that we extend the time for both the applicant as well as the opposition so that we may be able to hear by a total of 15 minutes i'll second that Okay, we have any, any discussion on that? Okay, all, all in favor of adding <coughs> 15 more minutes to both the applicant and those in opposition, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nope, okay, keep going. And again, feel free to just say you agree with the person before you too, so we don't have to use every <laughs> second of it. Okay. Go ahead. Greg Hammond. But we don't want to discourage you from talking either. I'll try to be brief as well. Uh, my name is Greg Hammond. I live at 1336 Chaucer Lane. 
That is the Canterbury Hills neighborhood. It's right across from Montgomery School. And I, I think that uh, not a lot of people know about our neighborhood. A lot of people don't even know that we're called Canterbury Hills, right? We've heard of some of the larger neighborhoods there. But I, I want to point out that we've got only three streets where we can get out. Our, our pocket is pretty closed in from a traffic standpoint. So you're looking at Rustic Ridge, Dunwoody Lane, and Chaucer Lane. That pocket, I mean, I, I really sympathize with the gentleman who spoke earlier about being able to get in and out of my own neighborhood. Now, I've been here 20 years, okay? I've grown up uh, on West Nancy Creek. I got married. I moved up to Chaucer Lane. I absolutely love my city. I love my location. Uh, this monstrosity going up here is, it, it's a train wreck. It's a mess, okay? Especially when we get past Ashford Green, okay? You get past Perimeter Summit, everything's a single family home. And really, we look to our elected officials to safeguard our property and the character of our neighborhood. Okay, I mean, that would be my appeal to you. I strongly oppose this, this measure. Uh, one last thing I'd like to say is, uh, it, it seems to me there's some additional plans that are gonna happen. I mean, we've already been through the substation mess. We have that. Uh, but you've got plans, I hear, for the future of Ashford Green. So I'm wondering, you know, how this is being considered in light of other plans with Ashford Green. More people, more density, hearing arguments about, you know, water, uh, population, traffic, school system for an already packed out Montgomery Elementary. I'd like you to think about that too. I mean, this, this doesn't, this isn't an isolated patch here. As we look at that corner, that corner is already terrible. Can't even get back in my own neighborhood. So thank you very much for allowing me to comment. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Thank you. Okay. I'm just going to give time for Aranda to add a minute and 22 seconds that was remaining from the previous 20 minutes okay. that we had. Uh, but the next speaker is Harry Cardo. I'm sorry? Okay. And what, the, the name was, what was the last name, though? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's Cardile, C-A-R-D-I-L-E. Yes, Cardile. Okay. Next. Okay. Alan Mick. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Alan Mick. I live at 4110 Oak Forest Drive. I'm actually, if we can use this here, my house is located on lot, lot four right here with a 45 uh, foot setback. And I come at this at a little bit different approach because I don't have, I don't have kids. I know the traffic's traffic in Atlanta and this certainly won't help, but I'm looking at certain issues here where you look at uh, this, this one particular unit here, I have a 45 and a half foot setback. I had to conform with the two houses on either side when I did that. It's a minimum 40 foot setback, but I had to conform and balance it between the two. As you're coming around the corner here and you come up to uh, this first townhouse, lot one, that's sitting 22 feet off the street. These are so-called two-story townhouses with drive-under garages. When you do a drive-under garage, you've got front stairs up here, 16, 16 feet off the, off the base. This is a three-and-a-half-story uh, three structure right next to my house as I'm coming around. <coughs> it's going to look like a, a wall there, either a brick wall or, or a siding wall or something like that. Um, one of the other, okay, I'm adjacent to this section here. This other section here, if you look at the contours going down through here, there's a drop-off from the curb here on Oak Forest Drive of 50 feet following these uh, contours all the way down to the back. And the only way is going to be a clear cut, fill, however they're going to try to develop that side, I, I have no idea. Um, one other point on my side, um, there's one, two, three, four units with the back elevated up above the garage facing my master bedroom window from my sideline. And you have a road dead ending. There's some buffer in here, but this is also dead ending 30, 40, 50 feet. I mean, this room is only 40 feet uh, deep, I think. So I would say I over overwhelmingly oppose, oppose this. And to summarize, I would just say it's a totally un un inappropriate, unacceptable type of rezoning. To me, it's this classic kind of spot zoning. 
It takes away the very essence and the entrance to our subdivision. It's, um, it's completely, to me, it's, it's not oriented correctly to our streets with, with, with the sides, with rears facing the, the sidelines of the houses. And um, as I said, it's going to uh, take away a lot of the trees, our entrance. Um, and as uh, Alan Cole was saying, it completely redefines and recharacterizes the whole subdivision where we're living. It's very inward looking with the sides, backs, rears all facing us, so it's not part of our subdivision. It's kind of an introspective, inward looking, isolated kind of a development, which isn't part of it. It doesn't transition anything. And I, I've said before, I'd like to see it stay R100, like everybody's talking about. I mean, we, there's other possibilities of a little bit more dense single family houses and that type of thing. But I just want to say I'm completely opposed to this. I think it's it's totally inappropriate, it's unnecessary, and that's my stand on it. Thank you, Mr. Baker. I appreciate it. Jimmy Turnage. Hello, my name is Jimmy Turnage. I live at 3916 Ashford Dunwoody Road. We've been there for 28 years. And we loved it so much when we bought our house, we moved three mailboxes down the street. And I must say, it is a residential street. The city limit sign to Brookhaven is right here where they're wanting to do all of this and it is residential all the way till it ends right here on Peachtree Industrial. And every day when I come home from work, well today I pass four places, four, that had been leveled. All these huge beautiful trees gone. Who knows what they're gonna put there. But the last thing that I want to see when I come home from work every day is that. I mean, one thing I love about our neighborhood, it is single family homes. I've raised my children there. In fact, Alan may be the only person that knows this. Our neighborhood is so old, it's called Devonshire. And I don't think anybody even knows who Devonshire is. But it is a single, fa single family place. And I just don't think townhomes, I mean, I take issue with it being substandard. I love our neighborhood, and those people that live there over the years have been wonderful. So anyway, I'm opposed to it. All right. Thank you, Ms. Turnage. No more speaker cards, Ms. Sherman. Okay. Well, thank you. And uh, sorry, Mr. Roberts, they went through all the time. Uh, so in, um, in the spirit of fair fairness and uh, equity, um, well, you're welcome to extend that if you'd like okay. to the well, opposition. Yeah, I guess people. we did to the, didn't we? Yeah, we did extend it, but he already spoke for three minutes. Yeah, just everybody, yeah, let us do it here. He already spoke for three minutes. So. Yeah, I think he's already spoken, I think, and, and we're not obligated to. You're not necessarily obligated yeah, I to. Think we've, I, th I think we've is, certainly. Is there, actually, is there something that he wanted to say that wasn't said before? That would be different. If yeah. he's going to say something, something different than what we've not heard. Then, well, why don't we ask that? Mm -hmm. Give us just a minute, if you would. You know, we can, you can do, though, if we don't give the extra time, if, if when we open up to questions, you can, somebody can ask him. Is there? It's done our three-minute thing. I think we stick with what we've done. Yeah. I, okay, everyone has, all right, here's what we've kind of, everyone has spoken, we've extended the time beyond the, the 20 minutes, we've heard, we're beginning to hear some of the same things, you know, from people. We know everyone wants to speak and we, we tried, but I think we've, I think we've, we've got to move, we're going to move on and uh, it's time to um, hear from the, it's time to hear from, 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 the, uh, from the applicant and their representative at this point. So, they moved on. Yeah. All right. Mr. Dillard, it's your time now. If we have questions, by the way, remember, we can ask questions of people, so, you know, who've spoken, so. How much time have I got? Oh, 30, 29. I just want to give you a little comfort. I know. I'm not going to take 30 minutes. Yeah, I believe. <laughs> I've known you long enough, I, you, but, you'll get to, you'll get your, but you'll get your piece in, won't you? <laughs> Okay. Um, 33 minutes. You know, 30, 33 minutes. Um, Point of order, Mr. Chairman. I apologize. All right. Go ahead. Hold. Okay. Before the applicant speaks, um, just in the fact that we are extending the full 15 minutes to the uh, 
to the applicant. We do have that eight minutes, 53 seconds. There are additional uh, comment cards that have been brought up. Um, one additional I just got. Um, so if we'd like, I would suggest. I, I, you, I have a yeah. feeling the applicant is saying it'd be okay. So right. let's hear from the, the other app. We. So it was eight minutes, 53 seconds. Okay. So, I apologize for the interruption. No, that's okay. We, and I, and I appreciate that, Mr. Dillard. We're, you know, we want everyone to be, we want to hear, we're, we're trying to do the best we can. So, all right. Three minutes or less. <laughs> right. I first of all apologize for the misunderstanding. I think all of us, if we had known that in order to get the time that we felt we were going to be allocated, that we needed to submit cards, we thought our time was going to be handed over to Clay. So in the spirit of that, I'm Emily Joy Taylor. I live at 4181 Oak Forest Drive. I've lived there for just over 10 years with my husband and my son, who has attended Montgomery Elementary, and um, would like to hand off my time to Clay. Clay? Well, I'll try two minutes and 30 seconds or something like that. Okay, I'll try and be as brief as possible to finish what portion of my argument I can. Um, I'd like to, what we've, we've talked a lot about whether you can build single family homes on this property. Single family homes are there now. I don't need to belabor that point. But you don't have to take my word for it. This is the last two iterations ago. This is the proposal, the site plan that Rockhaven Homes was proposing. And if I don't know if you can see it, but where my pen is, there are seven single family home lots. Now the density along the whole property is greater because they have they still have more townhomes added up. It's like forty something. But what what's very telling about this is, as you heard Alan Cole and Alan Mick talk about, is this is the most buildable portion of the property over here. If you were going to propose on a site plan where you're going to build single family homes, you'd propose them where you say you think you can build them. All along, they've been telling everybody in our neighborhood, it can't be done, we can't build single family homes. And what do they do? They propose seven homes on the hardest part to build single family homes. I'd, I'd submit to you that is evidence that they can do it. They just can't do it for as much of a profit as they'd like to. Now, I want to finally address this step down buffer concept. That is a legal fiction. That's created to act like they are for this neighborhood, somehow supporting the neighborhood to step down from commercial or high-density property. As, as Alan mentioned and a lot of people mentioned, nobody in our neighborhood has even seen that as a problem. Nobody's asking for a step down. But my question to you is, where's Alan Mix? You heard Alan Mix stand up and talk about his home and the wall of bricks and siding that he's going to look at and the dead end road. Where's his step down? He's got, he's got standing to come in here to you six months from now when this gets underway and say, I want my step down. I want to sell my house and build 48 townhomes. And then the neighbor next to him and the neighbor next to him, the precedent this is going to set is going to damage every single one of these neighborhoods. And I want to read to you from the City Community Development Report. The eastern side of the subject Oak Forest Hills neighborhood is bounded by a contiguous development of four similarly zoned R100 single family residential neighborhoods. The southern side of the subject neighborhood, Oak Forest Hills, is bounded by a contiguous development of nine similarly zoned R100 single family neighborhoods. So don't let anybody tell you that this area is not residential. It's nothing but single family residential homes. And if we allow this to happen, pretty soon we're going to have a hotel sitting right on top of Murphy Candler Park. We don't need a buffer. I want to read to you a case, and I'm sure Mr. Dillard's very familiar with it. Time him. is up, sir. Yeah, and we're, and I know, and I, and I, okay. everybody, we, we have stretched and stretched. It's time for, um, so let's make it very clear from this, you know, we're through that. We're make it clear to Mr. Dillard how much time he has, so, because we want to be perfectly clear, fair, fair. To be perfectly to be, fair. To be perfectly fair, uh, essentially it would be 28 minutes. Are you okay with 28 minutes maximum? We're, all right. And I and I, I want to say I appreciate you letting us stretch the thing a little bit here because it's important that well it's we, important to the neighborhood yeah yeah it's also important to these property owners and this developer that we have a fair and open dialogue about what needs to go on this property because it's clear that the current zoning is not appropriate if it was appropriate it had been developed now we mentioned 33 minutes that I had a little while ago. 33 from 2014 is 1981. 
1981, I brought the first Lake Hearn subdivision to the DeKalb County Board of Commissioners to rezone that property for non-residential use. That Lake Hearn neighborhood is now a portion of Perimeter Summit. We then later brought in the uh, Cox property where the Cox uh, building is on Lake Hearn over neighborhood opposition and after a lawsuit got that property zoned for a million square feet of, of office and a 350 room hotel which is yet to be built. In addition to that, we brought in the Lake Hearn <coughs> Circle neighborhood, which was 19 units that now are approximately where Villa Cristina and, and the Hyatt is today. Um, we got that zoned without litigation, but only after we had taken Ashford Green and the Lake Hearn neighborhood to the Supreme Court of Georgia. The arguments you hear tonight are not new. I've been hearing them for over 30 years. Same old, same old, same old. Leave it single family detached residential. And that's fine for the Oak Forest neighborhood and the Nancy, Creek, Nancy Heights neighborhood to talk about that because they don't own this land. They're not the ones that have been here for the last 30 some odd years on property that has no reasonable economic use. Now that doesn't mean that it doesn't have some value. Supreme Court doesn't require that it be value less. Matter of fact, it recognizes the fact that all land has some value. But I submit to you that during the last 30, 30, over 30 years, as Ashford Green and the Lake Hearn neighborhood and the neighborhood that's adjacent to to, uh, to Lake Hearn that now has a 23 acre buffer adjacent to St. Joseph's and the Johnson Ferry Glen Ridge connector system that this property had it been suitable for development under the R75 category would have, it would have been done. This is a very affluent desirable place to live. There's no question about that. As a part of that 1980 movement, we had all, I had a client that had all or a part of the Oak Forest neighborhood also under contract to redevelop to non-residential. That, that contract did not go through. And as a result, the Oak Forest neighborhood has remained where it is. Have those properties gone down because of the high density urban environment within which they live? The answer is no. Are there expensive homes being built in the Oak Forest neighborhood today? The answer is yes. Are they being built on this property? The answer is no. And why is that? Because R75 for this under five acre piece of property, six basically vacant lots that have been rented for years is not suitable for development as a single family detached residential use. It would have been done. The existing owners would have done it. Somebody would have come in and put, put these properties together. I can't tell you the number of clients or potential clients that have come to me over the last 30 years to look at this property for non-residential uses. From a racetrack to a got to a drug store to office all across the all across the way. I refuse to take those cases because it doesn't need a non-residential use across from Asher Green. It does need to have a transition of residential into and from the Oak Forest neighborhood. And this is exactly the kind of use that I have urged over the years that needs to go on this now less than five acres. We can't sit here and hold these property owners hostage because of the unsupported allegations that traffic is going to be bad because of this development. Traffic's already bad. 
You think 36 additional residential units on this property is going to cause any kind of serious impact on an already overcrowded Ashford Dunwoody Road? The answer is no. Can you use traffic as a justification for the denial of a rezoning? Supreme Court has said resoundingly, no, you cannot use traffic. The staff's report relative to the school impact shows that the school system says that the, that the student generation from this development on the Montgomery Elementary uh, School would be minimal. Can you deny rezoning because of hydrological or surface water or water and sewer issues? The answer is no. Those are permitting issues. You either got sewer or you don't. We do have sewer here. I remember when we did the Lake Hearn development, the Nancy Creek's outfall sewer ran across Lake Hearn Drive. And it came from up around where North Park is. We improved that system as a part of that development. And this, this watershed falls within that Nancy Creek Basin. There is adequate sewer. Hydrological issues, we can't flood our neighbor. We got some real topo issues on this property. It's going to cause a lot of, of fill. It's one of the reasons you, can't, you haven't seen anything built on it. The, the topo is so severe you can't do a single family home. So today, today, look, I've been hearing that for years. <laughs> okay. It's like you gave them the respect. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, so the, the thing about it is the utilities are available. You can't deny because of traffic. I submit that the, the impact on schools is, 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 is minimal. And you really can't deny zoning because of impact on schools anywhere. That's the Board of Education's job. What you've got to determine is, is the property suitably zoned today? And does the R75 classification cause this property owner to suffer damages that's not suffered by the community as a whole? And are they special to these property owners versus those that are in close proximity? The answer is, this property does not compare suitably or, or comparably to other single-family <coughs> detached R75 residences in the Oak Forest neighborhood. If it did, like I said, it had been, been developed. Rock Haven is building nice homes in this community already. If there was an opportunity to do single-family, they would be doing it. Thirty-six homes, when there's over a hundred existing homes, does not change the character of the neighborhood. If you look at the the townhouse photograph that we provided for you, these townhouses were done probably 15 years ago on Lennox Road at the intersection of Ferncliff, right below the Marta Station. Um, they're across the street. They're existing across the street from. Uh, a home for the elderly and uh, high density residential. The residential street, the pictures that you see there abut the back of, these de of this development. This is a comparable type of townhome that we're talking about for this particular area. And given the Lennox, Lennox area, it is a comparable uh, environment within which we are looking at tonight. The value of the single family homes that are just that that are adjacent to these townhomes accrue annually at a higher rate of value, increase in value, than other homes in in the surrounding uh, neighborhood between Rocks, Roxborough, uh, Lake uh, Lennox, Lennox Road, and uh, North Root Hills Road. So um, this concept in an urban environment is not unusual. This concept, as we look at the comprehensive plan current recommendation, which is suburban character, which is up to eight units an acre, and our current, we're, we're consistent with that. But if you look at what we are looking at as far as amendments to the comprehensive plan, I'm sure you're very well aware of those discussions. We're looking at an activity center. We're looking at a node 
of urban development, not only here, but all the way into Dunwoody to the transit station around it, we're looking at a true urban core. And when you do that, it doesn't prohibit single family detached residential, but what it does allow for is a mix of housing. And nobody, nobody in my over 40 years of doing zoning, zoning work has shown how this type of product, where you're looking at six, seven hundred thousand dollar townhouses adjacent to similarly valued homes or greater, single family detached, causes the single family detached to go down in value. I've never seen an appraiser come in and show me that. It doesn't happen. What does happen though, is where you've got a deteriorating in uninhabited or rental piece of property that's not maintained in close proximity to single family detached residential, it does cause that single family detached residential to go down in value. And that's exactly what we got here. This property left unzoned R75 is not a benefit to the Oak Forest neighborhood. It is a detriment to the Oak Forest neighborhood. The best thing that could happen is for this property to be, to be developed. We think it needs to be developed in accordance with the RA8 uh, designation as we have submitted. But the thing that you need to look at is whether or not, first of all, is R75 a suitable classification? If you think it is, then so be it. But if you think it not, then we ask that you exercise your leadership and your discretion to help us and city council come up with a use that, we, that is suitable. And we feel that the RA8 designation is a suitable designation. It's not going to be a substandard home. They're not going to bring the value of, these, of, these, uh, of this neighborhood down. And as a matter of fact, I think that while this neighborhood and others, Burnwick and others, fought us over the Lake Hearn situation years ago, I think they would all admit that being in close proximity to their job, being in close proximity to their office, being in close proximity to shopping has in fact been a benefit to them long term. Because I can show you on the tax records and the sales that the values of those homes that are but perimeter summit, that are in the Oak Forest neighborhood, that are down Ashford Dunwoody Road, and by the way, DOT, your DOT folks say Ashford Dunwoody Road is not a minor arterial, it's a major arterial. It is not a residential street. And I know that we've got residences that, 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 that front it. But when you look at what needs to happen, it's your leadership and your discretion that we ask you help to help us with. We think we've come up with a, a, a reasonable plan. If it doesn't work, then I think you need to, first of all, decide whether R75 is okay. If you say R75 is okay, that's the end of the day. I, we strongly disagree with that, and I've got three Supreme Court decisions across the street that can show you how these properties don't compare to the other homes that are located in, Oak Forest, in the Oak Forest neighborhood. On a per square foot basis, these lots don't compare to the lots that the folks that were, that were opposing this homes are located on. It doesn't, and it won't, and it never will. So with that, we ask that you look at this in a fair and impartial way, and I know you will. Uh, these decisions are not, uh, are not easy, uh, but at the same time, when we cross over from suburban to urban, these are the kind of decisions that need to be made. And they need to be made cautiously, but they also need to be made with the understanding that only the denial of this can only be made if there's an overriding public health, safety, and welfare protection that's going to be afforded by Oak Forest, to the Oak Forest neighborhood because these properties remain R75. And it cannot damage these property owners to the extent that you are taking a valuable property right from them. I think to deny it, that's what you would be doing. Is there something in between that might work? We don't know. We had not had that dialogue. We had not had that opportunity. 
single family detached on this property does not work. And we ask that you rezone the property in accordance with the site plan approved and the conditions as submitted by staff. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dillard. Okay, so with that, um, we've uh, stretched this to make sure we heard both sides of it. And um, uh, with that, I'm going to close the, close the public hearing and the, give the planning commissioners an opportunity to ask questions of the staff, anyone who has spoken, uh, and the applicant. So let's start on, which way do I usually start? We'll start down here this time with. I have no questions. Okay. Mr. Levy? I have some questions. Okay. Um, this is a question for the applicant. Uh, I want to pick up on the last sort of theme I think that you were raising dealing with its current use uh, and its um, whether it has a reasonable economic value because I agree with you that is pretty much the heart uh, of the decision right there um, and you made the comment that uh, we could not these properties did not could not compare to the lots I guess were internal in the Oak Forest neighborhood how would this compare though to uh, Ms. Rutherford's lot, who I understand live on 4089 uh, Ashford Dunwoody, uh, essentially the other res existing residential homes that are on the front Ashford Dunwoody, because I think that's sort of the where I'm struggling with. As you leave Perimeter Summit and go, I guess it's south down Ashford Dunwoody Road, you've got some homes that have been there for a while that were built originally on, on Ashford Dunwoody Road. But you also, as you go past Marist, if you go past, um, past the uh, apartments on the right and as you approach Blackman Park, you'll see a very different type of housing that is, is present, particularly as you go from the Hart's Mill uh, like toward Johnson Ferry, okay? And, and what I'm saying is you're not gonna build, that doesn't mean that there hasn't been somebody that's built a big house I had, a, I had a, a, a client that came in off of Ashford Dunwoody and did a, a little cul-de-sac and he faced that. I can't, it's not Chaucer, but it was, it was like a six or eight deal subdivision. But it was a cluster deal and we did it to our A8, okay, for him to do single family detached on that particular location. Um, but I believe that once you pass Perimeter Summit, then, then that, that roadway changes significantly, not from the number of trips per day, but it does become more residential in character. We don't have that benefit, okay? And as you go down toward the school, past the school, Nancy, Nancy uh, Creek Heights, if you look at those, those houses, you don't have a lot of houses fronting on Ashford Dunwoody, they front the internal streets that come off of Ashford Dunwoody. So, I think there are some houses, there are some houses that are there that have been built and improved over the years. There's no, there's no question about that. But I do believe that the character of Ashford Dunwoody changes after it passes perimeter summit. Okay, and I think the question is, and maybe it's, can I help with this? Maybe it's better for the staff. Could you tell us the value, the property at 4089 Ashford Dunwoody Road? Do we have that? That's the Miss yeah. Miss Rutherford's house, I believe. Get to what value you can. Hmm? I think that's what they. No, they, they were asking. I think you were asking what the price per acre was, or something. Well, not not what their price is. Oh. It's a thirty-five hundred square foot. Okay. Um, All right. No, it's a. You don't have it. Okay. Well, then, then we'll just have to move on with it. Okay. Sure. Uh, okay, I'm going to pass for now. Okay. Well, question for the applicant. You mentioned that. You're sort of opener and thought about other uses for that parcel and something in the middle from a density standpoint. Uh, what sort of discussion or thoughts were given to a cluster neighborhood? Single family, zero lot line cluster homes. You know, I think that's, uh, I think that's possible. I think that the, the thing, if you look at cluster, and, and we, just, we just did a cluster with Rock Haven at Roxborough Road and North, North Root Hills Road, okay? Single family detached situation. 
Uh, you got topo issues where density needs to accommodate the additional development costs that are required by that. Uh, we did look at, uh, as was pointed out, we did look at putting some single family detached against the uh, the neighborhood back there. We got no we got no support for that, so we went back to to what we know will work. Um, but I think the client is certainly willing to explore any and all our alternatives. Uh, we've met with the neighbors several times. We've not been able to get anywhere close to agreement. So here we are. Can I ask a question? Sure. I, I, I'm sorry, Ms. Palmer, was that your last name? Kind of Rutherford? Rutherford, Mr. Rutherford. Ms. Rutherford? Who, who? Robertson. Who Did I get the wrong? Robertson. First gentleman that spoke. Oh, the first Robertson. gentleman. Robertson. 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 Clay, Mr. Clay Roberts. So, were, were you a participant in the discussions with the developer? Yes, I was. And actually, the first. And meeting so tell me about the conversation when cluster homes as a concept came up. I was Just the one that. who brought it up. I'd love to comment on that. The very first meeting was across the street from my house. My neighbor was having it. I walked in. The very first question I asked was, have you considered cluster homes? Because I think you might get support from this neighborhood to consider single-family homes with smaller lots. And the response that I got from Mr. Dillard was, if you want to talk about single-family homes, we don't have anything further to say. And I, w I left. You can ask anybody because that's what happened. We talked about it at the next meeting. We said single-family homes. Brad Hughes, who represents the developer, said, well, what would you all consider? And we said, well, are you, are you offering single family homes? And he said, well, I'm not saying that. And we said, well, that's what we would consider. And we'd consider helping you get, get variances so you can build more homes than you're lawfully allowed to build. And all we got was that one plan where they showed homes. Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you suggest homes on this part here? This part here that's so developable, there's no topographical issues there. Why wouldn't you? Because that's the easiest part to develop. That's, that's what we're saying. I believe, and I can't speak for everybody in the neighborhood on this issue because we haven't talked, because we've never been given the, off, the offer, but I believe if, if the developer came to our neighborhood and said, we'd like to put cluster homes on both sides of this road, an attractive neighborhood, something similar to um, on Hearts Mill and Chambly, I, I can't think of the neighborhood. Mendenhall, something like that, or another t cluster type neighborhood. And I've seen, I've seen Rock and Haven's homes do it. They've got something called the Enclave on Peachtree Dunwoody Road. It's three homes that swing in on a little circle that they've built. They could build more in here. This is a larger piece of property. It's never been proposed to us. We asked that it be proposed. Okay, thank, thank you. you. <coughs> That's all. I'll pass. We'll go down. Yeah. Chris? Uh, I have a question for the applicant. Uh, regarding Tract A, of those parcels, are any of them addressed Oak Forest Drive? Do any of them? Are any of them addressed on Oak Forest Drive, or are they all addressed Ashford? I think they're <laughs> all on the uh, internal streets. The, 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 the way that they're all facing, the inter they, they're going to face external, okay, and they're going to have rear entry? No, cur currently. Currently, oh, those currently, are all. Oh, currently. I, I, don't, I think they're all Ashford Dunwood. Yeah, yeah that, the track, uh, track. Yeah, let, uh, let the let, which, let Ben out, let Ben out. Which which track is track A. He's referring yeah. to track. You're referring to track B, right? The one up north or oh, track A? Track A. Okay, I apologize. All Ashford Dunwoody. Track A is all Ashford Dunwoody. Yes. Yes. And and just as a follow up, Ben, track B is all Oak Forest. Track B. No, the corner house. Actually. One, corner one, yeah, house one is Ashford Dunwoody, two are Oak Forest. Yeah, that's wrong. The mailbox is no. Okay, please, we'll just let us, I, I know this is hard. Everyone wants to talk and we want to answer, but we've got some process we need to. Okay, I have, if not, I have. That's the only question I have okay. right now. We'll come back if we need to make sure. I have actually have three, three questions and uh, the, um, and I guess we, we might as well come up and stand up. Okay, are there any variances that uh, are being anticipated in this site plan that are being offered? I mean, are you going to go from us to the ZBA or? Uh, there are no variances. Okay, so there are no variances being, being at this time. Okay, two more. Uh, are, th are there any measures in, in thinking about the, the community, you know, and trying to figure out a way to balance it, as I said earlier? Uh, are there any measures being taken over and above the current tree ordinance to protect 
the trees and kind of buffer the community behind. I mean, I drive in there and I see all these big trees and I know the tree ordinance. And I know absolutely you'll ad adhere to that, but is there anything that you're doing over and above that? I don't think we've had a tree study done on, on the property. You know, obviously that'll have to be done as a part of the land disturbance permit. Um, you know, we're, we're open, I think, to, um, to the preservation of, uh, of specimen trees. They cost money to take down and they help sell homes. So I mean, we want to leave as many as, as possible, but I'm not aware of any study that we've done at this point. Chris, we done any? So we've not done it. We've not been asked, but. Uh, I was just asking. That's okay. Yeah. I was just asking. I really. Yeah, right. uh, but it's not a part of your proposal to to have anything over but, and above the current. But we've ordinance. not asked. We've not asked, and I think you've just recently done some work on your tree ordinance. We've not asked for any variances from the tree ordinance. Okay. And the last question I have are, um, considering, and I understand your argument, and this is not, you know, about. By the way, this is R100, not R75, Mr. Dillard. Okay. I believe that's. But uh, but the argument's the same. Um, in the design, we're being asked to make a recommendation, not just on the land use, but the site plan tied to that land use. That's what we're doing here. Right. Uh, this is not, you know, land use without a, a specific. So are there any design aspects of the current site plan that are over and above the required setbacks to shield uh, Mr. Mink, is it? Yeah. Or to shield the, I can't remember, the, uh, the, the owner of the two homes that abut the southern piece of the property. I mean, there's, there's a, a, is it Gamble, a Miss Gamble, that owns those two. So I'm asking you, are you, is there anything in your plan over and above the required setbacks? Not, not existing, but we would be open to additional landscaping, buffering, and that kind of thing. But, but not we've something not, we've We've not proposed it because we hadn't had anybody to talk to about it. Might remember that for the next. I mean, I, it's just. I understand yeah. you'll always. I have no question about Rock Haven or other builders that you represent will always adhere to the, you know, to the ordinances. I'm looking for something. If there's if there's additional material that we can put in that buffer uh, area, the setback, uh, however you want to do it, to call some of it uh, undisturbed, uh, we'd be more than happy to do that. I don't think that'd be a problem. And and that's fairly routinely and easily defined and done um, because you know we want the neighborhood to blend into the neighborhood but we also need we understand there needs to be some separation and, as well and, and I think you understand yeah. we need right things in writing you know it's, well, we everybody has great intentions and make it as a condition I, I wish it had been or would like it to see it right. you know as conditions of things we as, we draw those kind of conditions all the time we just not had an opportunity here okay do we want to let mr dillard or are we going to go up pop up and down again we're going to go actually through. i do have a question for mr dillard um you just referenced that you're willing to increase the buffer adding some materials so that you can have a separation between the single family home and this town home community is this the first time you've heard that tonight, or did that come up in the community we've, meeting? We've, we've talked about it obliquely, but I, we never got any serious dialogue going, so we didn't really pursue it. But what we're talking about, though, Mr. Funny, is putting putting additional material into the setback. There's, there's a trend, there is a transitional buffer, as I understand the ordinance, anyway. So what we would, what we would propose is that we would put additional material in that in that setback and transitional buffer over what the code requires. Okay. Thank you. So, Mr. Dillard, um, the cluster home community, you brought that up. Obviously, the community says they're open to that. Are you open to going back and looking at that proposal? We're always interested in trying to work it out with the neighborhood. Right? And, and let me just say why that wasn't pursued is that we submitted the six or seven lots and line that was didn't get us anywhere, so we didn't feel like negotiating with ourselves, so we went back to the original plan. But I'm just going to, I'm going to say that, you know, they're, they're obviously the owners of the property and there's a price involved, okay? Uh, but we are always willing to sit down with the neighborhood and try to discuss and try to reach some dialogue. And we have had those meetings, but they've just not been fruitful. All right. Okay. Have we covered? Okay, I think we've generally covered, so I'll, um, 
Another question for staff. Yeah. Okay. I have a question for staff. This, are we done? Yeah, I think I'm so. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we are. We're going to just, again, bear with us because we're really, tr we wrestle with these things. No problem. Okay. Mr. Song, I have a question for you. This is coming back to us for decision only. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. We don't have a. No, we don't have another. We, yeah, we the, gave it our deferment. Exactly. That single uh, approval for deferment uh, was already used last month. Okay, so I, I with that, it's out. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Question. That, that means there's more questions. Okay, well. Wait. So, it's procedure. so, Ben, yeah. can we recommend deferral to the council to then defer back to us? We have one what we can make. That's 30 days. But then can we recommend deferral to the council? I believe with the change that we uh, made effect of providing the planning commission with a single uh, ability to defer for a 30-day period, I don't think that's a possible recommendation that you could pass on to city council. Down here. Ben, Can we I, have, I have two quick questions well, let's, for let's, staff. Let's, let's, oh, okay, go on. Yeah, go Bert, and then we'll come back to you. And All right, and this is for staff as yes. well. All right, so in the nearby surrounding land analysis part of the staff report, the density of the, all the surrounding areas, looks like it ranges from the 1.45 to the 2.22. Is there anything close to, or even halfway between that and the 7.64, as far as like within a five mile radius or so? Not in terms of a similar use, but I mean, if we were to look at it as uh, there is the, uh, um, <coughs> can't recall the name of that, uh, the apartment complex, which is in uh, Perimeter Summit. Sure. Uh, that is, I believe, around 50 units to the acre, which is in close proximity of residential use. This is Villa Christina? Christina. Uh, well, next to Villa Christina, yeah. correct. <coughs> uh, Sonoma, I believe. Uh, but Sonoma. that that is at around 50 uh, units to the acre. If we're talking about development pattern, cons somewhat consistent or similar, to this area would be the next commercial node down along Ashford Dunwoody Road, which would be Johnson Ferry and Ashford Dunwoody. And at that proximity of that commercial node, there is obviously townhome developments, apartment developments that are both uh, adjacent to the Kroger Shopping Center and across the street from Blackburn Park, which would be somewhat similar in terms of the actual built environment. Um, in those instances, they most developments there would exceed uh, the density that's presented before you tonight in this rezoning. All right, thank you. Hey, Shannon, you have something? <coughs> no. I'm sorry, Chris. Ben, uh, yes. could you just, um, the, the applicant had mentioned uh, cluster development in, under RA-8. Can you just give us a quick clarification <coughs> on what RA-8 allows? Sure. I was looking into that uh, just to see what other zoning classifications would qualify under a cluster development. Unfortunately, the, uh, the ordinance that we have adopted from DeKalb County there are two specific um, uh, zoning classifications, RCD and RCH, I believe, that allow for uh, a cluster type of development to move forward. Unfortunately, those two uh, zoning districts have been repealed. So it only recognizes those developments that had previously been developed before, I believe, April 13, 1999, uh, under that zoning district. But there's no other rezoning that uh, an applicant can come in and seek those two specific zoning districts. Um, the RA8 specifically allows for attached and detached products. If you're going to go with a detached product, it requires that it be minimum 6,000 square feet. So the cluster effect in that case is sort of, I don't necessarily know if you will be able to have that same type of development or it could be genuinely called a cluster development just because of the required lot size requirement. Okay, I'm gonna, I think it's time. I think we've, we've heard from everybody and I, I realize we probably can sit here and yeah. It's, um, I think we've got to, what they call it, Fisher cut bait, I think at this point, I think we've got to do something. So um, I'm going to call for a. Wait, I have a question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, folks, but it's very important. I mean, I yeah. appreciate y'all taking the time, yeah. but there are some technicalities we need to make sure before we vote because we can't defer again. Okay. So let's be clear. Talk to me about that cluster home, the square footage in this RCD and RCH. Is that in our comprehensive plan that we just submitted? Do we have anything for that? Well, I simply put, RCD and RCH are no longer available zoning districts. That's what I wanted to put out Even there. Even in our new plan? Well, per, regardless of the comprehensive plan, because the zoning districts are determined by our zoning ordinance. Okay. 
And because of those uh, two zoning districts being repealed, unfortunately, we do not have that as a available district that someone could seek rezoning to. So then if we go to the R8 with that lot, are you saying that lot's too small, too big? Well, That's what I was not clear on. Ultimately, I don't. it depends on uh, the general public sort of definition of what they would consider as a cluster home. 6,000 square feet doesn't necessarily mean that you, you could actually have all these homes built in close proximity to each other. Uh, although 6,000 square feet doesn't seem like a lot, uh, there are still setbacks associated with the development as well. They would have to seek multiple variances for individual lot or for the overall development in order to develop uh, somewhat of a cluster type development. Um, but there isn't a specific zoning district that would fit specific to that request of developing a cluster. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. I mean, this is, we volunteer for this, folks. Um, all right, so I will entertain a motion uh, on uh, a combined motion, Ben, since we heard it combined. Uh, I would ask for, uh, well, yeah. in this case, because we uh, presented as two separate, I would okay, prefer we'll two separate, separate okay. motions. So please. I'll ask for uh, a motion on RZ 14-16, uh, the Rock Haven Homes uh, redevelopment. I'd like to make a motion that we deny RZ 14-16. Okay, we have a motion for denial of this. Do I have a second? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I always do this, right? The discussion, just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We appreciate everybody's input. We appreciate hearing both from the applicant and we recognize the, 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 ho the homeowners uh, who own this property. We recognize the people in Oak Forest, but there are one, two, three, four, five, six, there are eight conditions that we have to adhere to. And, and so when we're looking at it, I think we all, we all know the properties, we've all been through there. We look at these eight conditions, we listen, we've heard on both sides. And uh, so I'm ready to, since somebody else has anything, I'm ready to call the vote. Those in favor of Recommending to the City Council that RZ 14-16 be denied. Signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Aye. Okay. Two. Opposed. So one, two, th three, four, f five. In favor of recommending denial to? May I ask for a raise of a hand for those who oppose? Yeah. Those opposed. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now I'll ask for a motion on RZ 14-17. Uh, the second plot. I'll make a motion to <laughs> deny RZ 14-17. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? There was a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any, any discussion on this? All right. All those in favor of recommending denial of RZ 14-70, raise your hand and signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify, raise your hand and signify by saying, you know. So only one did? Right. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> All right. So six recommending denial, uh, one, rec one uh, uh, opposed to that. All right. Thank you all. We'll take a, a five-minute break. So um, uh, let's, before you go, let's one more thing. Everybody stop. What is the date specific for the council meeting? This is November 18th. November 18th is a city council meeting, and that'll be at 7 o'clock. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. in this room. Okay. Thank you. We'll take, uh, it's 8.40. We'll take five minutes. Yes, please. And hear the other ca next case at 8.45. Thank you. Countdown. We're on. Okay. This is item number RZ14-19, Castle Works, Inc. Request to rezone from R75 to RA8 along Telford, 1327-12 Telford, Drive. Ben? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The subject property is a single lot at the terminus of Telford Drive. It's currently 9 point, uh, 0.922 acres. Uh, the subject property is surrounded on three sides uh, by an apartment complex currently zoned RM85. The applicant is seeking to rezone the property to subdivide into four lots. Uh, the proposed density is 4.34 units. 
uh, under the RA8 zoning district. There are similarly zoned um, parcels within that area that have higher densities. And actually the proposal for 4.34, even with the RA8, would actually um, provide a density that's lower than even the uh, density provided by the existing R75 in the area. Uh, based upon the request, staff has uh, provided a staff report, uh, which we stipulate to. Staff did recommend approval with nine conditions uh, itemized under page 181 in your dockets. Thank you. Okay, and with that, I'll open the public hearing and we'll listen to the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I promise this isn't going to last as long as the last one, okay? I can promise, I can promise that as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is R75, not R100. I'm sorry I got confused. <laughs> and I couldn't resist. To like I know, that's okay. I, people love to catch me, you know. <laughs> Um, it, it's it's 0 0.92 acres. Uh, we're looking at uh, at four houses on on this four acres. Um, this is sort of the cottage type. Is this going to be picked up? Okay. 180 degrees. Doing this way. There you go. Thank you. Um, sort of a cottage type home. Um, the applicant actually lives across the street from this property, so he's developed in the area. We got RM85 <coughs> next to us, which is an apartment deal. Uh, this looks like a really good transition. The, uh, the conditions that are recommended by, by staff are okay with us. I'd like for you to look at number eight, because it talks about a tree preservation area. Really hadn't talked to Ben about this, but we couldn't find in the code where tree preservation area was defined. What we will do is we'll comply with the tree ordinance uh, we're going to have to look at that as a part of the hydrological issues relative to land disturbance, drainage, and that kind of thing. But as far as what we understand about uh, what we're being asked to do, we don't want to take down any trees that don't have to, and we'll, we'll comply with, uh, with number eight. We just want you to understand that we got to do retention somewhere, and we're not real sure where that's going to be. Um, but other than that, uh, minimal impact on streets and the staff uh, recommended, recommended approval is, uh, is acceptable to us. So okay, with those comments, you. we ask that you approve it as uh, recommended by staff. And I'm sure you're reserving the rest of your time. I reserve the rest of my time for a moment. <laughs> we're, getting good. we're getting there. We know, getting, we're getting there. Okay. Do we have any? Um, no, we do not have any uh, speaker cards in support or opposition. Okay. So with, do you have anything else you want to say? Okay, so with that we answer questions. I have Doug Griffin here to answer your questions. Okay, so with that we will close the public hearing and we'll open it up to the commission to ask any questions of either the staff or the applicant. No. <clears throat> The only question I have is is about that condition number eight and what is there a better after you I know you you and Mr. Diller have talked and I guess we mentioned it was mentioned in the work session but it's as is I mean is there anything you would propose to be different than you originally wrote or do you like you want to keep it does the staff want to keep it the way it is or well actually uh, I didn't have direct conversation with uh, Mr. Diller but I did have conversation with the applicant Mr. Okay. Griffin um, and we did talk, uh, the, the intent of that tree preservation area essentially was a tree safe area, more or less. Um, but they do bring up a good point because uh, under condition number nine, they are required to provide for water retention and water quality. Um, condition number nine, the way it's, uh, la the language provided, does provide the flexibility to the developer uh, to either develop a, a single retention pond or s a single sort of water treatment uh, feature or individual uh, water quality features for individual lots, uh, which based upon the topography may require them to uh, encroach a little bit further towards the back end of the property. Essentially, um, condition number eight could be dealt with uh, per the tree ordinance <coughs> that we did adopt, uh, where it does require for a certain amount of uh, tree preservation to be uh, considered, I believe it's 100 inch uh, DBH per acre. So in this case, I believe they'll be more than able to meet that requirement. Um, so if it's 
the desire of the planning commission. Um, it, it essentially is up to the commission to decide what you would like if, to do. If with we left it in, mm -hmm. is there enough flexibility for the applicant to do what they need to do with your, uh, I mean? In all honesty, I believe uh, it may uh, create difficulties. Okay, so you're, okay, and then the second question, are there any, are there any variances that are a part of the site plan that are, that are um, um, foreseen at this point? Not that I'm aware of, and I believe the intent of uh, the developer was to move forward uh, with a development that would not seek any additional variances. Is that true? So there are no, no, at this point there are none. I always realize you have the right if something comes up that, that do that. I did a, um, and this is for, for uh, staff. Uh, at what point in the process is the cul-de-sac dedicated? In other words, that has to be done before the construction of the homes begins, or is that simply, you know, they do it and at the end the cul-de-sac will be dedicated? It would occur during the uh, land disturbance permit phase. They would have to show all disturbance associated with the development. Um, so that would that's when it would be triggered. All right. so we don't have to build in any conditions as far as the construction of the cul-de-sac uh, relative to anything else, or the other construction? Not necessarily, unless again, if it's the desire of the Planning Commission to sort of specify that, uh, just for uh, you know a greater understanding of how the development should occur. But that's, that's an option that's available. We'll put it this way, could they, if we, don't mention anything about the cul-de-sac. I know we've got um, the condition one talks about the property being limited to four single-family detached homes in accordance with the site plan. And since the site plan references the cul-de-sac, then that that should pick up and will guarantee that we'll have a cul-de-sac? Oh, yes, yes. If they did not have the cul-de-sac, they would not be able to get all four of those lots. Okay. No, I was just going to make sure. Okay. When we were talking about when will the cul-de-sac be completed, I think um, if they build the properties with the subgrade there and just finish it out at the end, I think that will leave a nice look versus building it out on the front end and then all the trucks come yeah. in and tear it out. I would, I would suggest them, you know, just doing the subgrade and letting that be raw until all the homes are built. Right. But in either case, in terms of the actual permitting mm -hmm. process, it will be taken care of during the land disturbance permit phase. Chris, anything down there? No. Shannon? Sorry. Oh, and, just and just to add additionally, obviously, in addition to the LDP, they would also be required to go through the final planning process as well. And that would also uh, take care of that end as well. So I heard, if I heard, understood what you said, <laughs> you're saying can, you would be, the staff would be okay with condition A if we, if, if a motion were to be made to approve this and and delete condition eight, you would be Cor supportive of the, the staff would be supportive of that? Correct. I think, uh, again, tree preservation could be uh, completed just based, based upon the development that they're requesting. Uh, definitely, there's always a concern related to uh, stormwater runoff yeah, yeah. Uh, that we would prefer that to be in place and for them to have the required water quality, water uh, retention area. Um, that may have more uh, a greater impact than necessarily the tree safe area that we sort of condition under uh, condition number eight. All right, so I'll entertain a I'll entertain a motion on uh, RZ fourteen dash nineteen. Mr. Chairman, I don't know if we close the public hearing. Oh, I just the public to hearing is closed. Uh, I'm, you know, we have a big crowd. I think we handle this <laughs> pretty well. <laughs> um, Public hearing is closed. We've any questions? Any more questions for anybody? All right. So I'm ready. To, we're ready to entertain a motion for RZ 14-19. I'll make a motion to approve RZ 14-19. Second. Okay, any discussion? Well, do we want to talk about how to deal with that? Con the staff conditions. Um, as far as that eight, or just leave it as is with the recommendation, with the um, staff recommended condition number eight, the tree save. There is your, is your motion to clarify the motion. So I guess there are two ways you can ask. First, I made the motion to amend the motion to include certain staff conditions, or you can make a motion to 
a second motion, which we would then have to deal with first. So I don't. You know, I was looking really for a point of clarification whether his motion included that included or not. staff recommendations okay. as, as as written. As, as stated. Okay. okay. So so the motion to be clarify, the motion is to approve RZ fourteen dash nine nineteen with the nine staff recommendations as currently written, and we have a second on that. So. I'd, I'd, I'd like to make a motion um, to well, remove uh, actually the number eight. The motion is uh, has already been made. It's been second. But he can uh, he could ask he could ask for a, a amendment to amendment. the motion okay. that would have to be yes. Uh, we dealt with three four. We deal with first. correct and accepted right. by the initial yeah. uh, right. the the commissioner right. who made the there motion two, initially. There are two ways to do it. You can ask for a friendly amendment. Ask the person who made the motion. You know to to and. and Already heard so it said no. Okay. So you can make another motion to amend, you know, which I'm hearing yes. you say. I'd like to make a motion to amend uh, Commissioner Francois' motion. And 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 is that and the, the motion to amend would be to remove condition number eight. Okay, so we have a motion to amend to remove con staff recommendation condition number eight. Do I have a second on that one? I'll second, second it. I'll okay. second it. Okay. So we have a motion, a second. Any discussion on the motion to amend, which is the removal of staff condition number eight? Is there any more discussion on that? Okay, so that's what we're going to vote on first is. And then essentially if uh, Commissioner Francois will be accepting of that friendly amendment, then I... No, no, it wasn't a friendly oh, amendment. Oh, it wasn't a friendly amendment? It was an amendment okay. to... It was, a, an, it was a motion to amend. Okay. I think we tried and there was a mistake. Yeah, okay. we tried and it didn't work, so we did a motion to amend. Okay. Well, Robert's rules are wonderful, aren't they? <laughs> 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 Who wrote Page that? 246. <laughs> um, so we have a, a mo the first thing we're going to vote on is a motion to amend, which eliminates staff condition number eight. We have a motion, we have a second, we have no more discussion. Uh, all in favor of, of, that, of the motion to amend, which removes staff condition number eight, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Okay, so now we're going to vote on, we have a motion and a second to recommend uh, to the City Council approval of RZ 14-919 as amended, which takes out con staff condition number eight. Any more discussion on that? No. All in favor of that, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so bottom line is we got this without condition number eight. <laughs> yes. Well, Sorry, was, you, that's good. It no, just it moved good. a little fast. That's okay. That's procedurally, change that. Procedurally, that was good. Thank you all. We appreciate it. Good luck, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> What's the price point of these houses? Out of curiosity, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adjourn. We have a motion <laughs> to adjourn. <laughs> Countdown. Second. Any discussion? We're on. Okay. All this in favor is of adjourning. Uh, item number uh, RZ fourteen okay, dash nineteen. <laughs> Castle Works, Inc. Request to rezone from R seventy five to R A eight along Telford. 1327 12 Telford Drive. Ben? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The subject property is a single lot at the terminus of Telford Drive. It's currently 9 point, uh, 0.922 acres. Uh, the subject property is surrounded on three sides uh, by an apartment complex currently zoned RM85. The applicant is seeking to rezone the property to subdivide into four lots. Uh, the proposed density is 4.34 units uh, under the RA8 zoning district. There are similarly zoned um, parcels within that area that have higher densities. And actually the proposal for 4.34, even with the RA8, would actually um, provide a density that's lower than even the uh, density provided by the existing R75 in the area. Uh, based upon the request, staff has uh, provided a staff report, uh, which we stipulate to. Staff did recommend approval with nine conditions uh, itemized under page 181 in your dockets. Thank you. Okay, and with that, I'll open the public hearing and we'll listen to the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I promise this isn't going to last as long as the last one, okay? I can, prom I can promise that as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is R75, not R100. I'm sorry I got confused. <laughs> and I couldn't resist to <laughs> I know, that's okay. I, people love to catch me, you know. <laughs> Um, it, it's it's 0 0.92 acres. Uh, we're looking at uh, at four houses on on this four acres. Um, 
This is sort of the cottage type. Is this going to be picked up? Okay. 180 degrees. So on this one. There you go. Thank you. Uh, sort of a cottage type home. Um, the applicant actually lives across the street from this property, so he's developed in the area. We got RM85 <laughs> next to us, which is an apartment deal. Uh, this looks like a really good transition. The, uh, the conditions that are recommended by, by staff are okay with us. I'd like for you to look at number eight, because it talks about a tree preservation area. Really hadn't talked to Ben about this, but we couldn't find in the code where tree preservation area was defined. What we will do is we'll comply with the tree ordinance. Uh, we're going to have to look at that as a part of the hydrological issues relative to land disturbance, drainage, and that kind of thing. But as far as what we understand about uh, what we're being asked to do, we don't want to take down any trees that don't have to, and we'll we'll comply with uh, with number eight. We just want you to understand that we got to do retention somewhere, and we're not real sure where that's going to be. Um, but other than that, uh, minimal impact on streets and the staff uh, recommended recommended approval is uh, is acceptable to us. So, okay. with those comments, we ask that you approve it as uh, recommended by staff. And I'm sure you're reserving the rest of your time. I reserve the rest of my time for rebuttal. <laughs> we're getting good. We're getting there. We know. Getting, getting there. Okay. Do we have any? Um, no, we do not have any uh, speaker cards, cards in support or opposition. Okay, so with, do you have anything else you want to say? Okay, so with that we. Answer questions. I have Doug Griffin here to answer your questions. Okay, so with that we will close the public hearing, and we'll open it up to the commission to ask any questions of either the staff or the applicant. No. <clears throat> No? Yeah. Oh. Oh, well, the only question I have is, is about that condition number eight and what is there a better after you I know you you and Mr. Diller have talked and I guess we mentioned it was mentioned in the work session, but it's as is. I mean, is there anything you would propose to be different than you originally wrote or do you like you want to keep it does the staff want to keep <clears throat> it the way it is or well actually uh I didn't have direct conversation with uh Mr. Dillard, but I did have conversation with the applicant, Mr. Okay. Griffin, okay. Um, and we did talk. Uh, the The intent of that tree preservation area essentially was a tree safe area, more or less. Um, but they do bring up a good point because uh, under condition number nine, they are required to provide for water retention and water quality. Um, condition number nine, the way it's uh, la the language provided, does provide the flexibility to the developer uh, to either develop a, a single retention pond or so a single sort of water treatment uh, feature or individual uh, water quality features for individual lots, uh, which based upon the topography may require them to uh, encroach a little bit further towards the back end of the property. Essentially, um, condition number eight could be dealt with uh, per the tree <coughs> ordinance that we did adopt, uh, where it does require for a certain amount of uh, tree preservation to be uh, considered, I believe it's a hundred inch uh, dBH per acre. So in this case, I believe they'll be more than able to meet that requirement. Um, so if it's the desire of the planning commission, um, it, it essentially is up to the commission to decide what you would like if, to do. If with we left it in, mm -hmm. is there enough flexibility for the applicant to do what they need to do with your? Uh, I mean, in all honesty, I believe uh, it may. Uh, create difficulties. Okay, so you're okay. And then the second question: Are there any are there any variances that are a part of the site plan that are that are um, um, foreseen at this point? Not that I'm aware of, and I believe the intent of uh, the developer was to move forward uh, with a development that would not seek any additional variances. Is that true. So there are no no at this point there are none. I always realize you have the right if something comes up that uh, do that. I did have um, and this is for, for uh, staff. Uh, at what point in the process is the cul-de-sac dedicated? In other words, that has to be done before the construction of the homes begins, or is that simply, you know, they do it and at the end the cul-de-sac will be dedicated? It would occur during the uh, land disturbance permit phase. They would have to show 
all disturbance associated with the development. Um, so that would that's when it would be triggered. Right. So we don't have to build in any conditions as far as the construction of the cul-de-sac uh, relative to anything else or the other construction. Not no. necessarily, unless again, if it's the desire of the planning commission to sort of specify that, uh, just for uh, you know a greater understanding of how the development should occur. But that's that's an option that's available. We'll put it this way: Could they, if we don't mention anything about the cul-de-sac, I know we've got. Um, the condition one talks about the property being limited to four single-family detached homes in accordance with the site plan. And since the site plan references the cul-de-sac, then that that should pick up and will guarantee that we'll have a cul-de-sac? Oh, yes. Yes. If they did not have the cul-de-sac, they would not be able to get all four of those lots. Okay. No, I was just going to make sure. Okay. When we were talking about when will the cul-de-sac be completed, I think... Um, if they build the properties with the subgrade there and just finish it out at the end, I think that will leave a nice look versus building it out on the front end and then all the trucks come yeah. in and tear it out. I would, I would suggest them, you know, just doing the subgrade and letting that be raw until all the homes are built. Right. But in either case, in terms of the actual permitting process, mm -hmm. it will be taken care of during the land disturbance permit phase. Chris, anything down there? Yeah. Shannon? Oh, and, just and just to add additionally, obviously, in addition to the LDP, they would also be required to go through the final planning process as well. And that would also uh, take care of that end as well. So I heard, if I heard, understood what you said, you're saying can, you would be, the staff would be okay with condition A if we, if, if a motion were to be made to approve this and, and delete condition eight, you would be supportive of the, the staff would be supportive of that? Correct. I think, uh, again, tree preservation could be uh, completed just based, based upon the development that they're requesting. Uh, definitely, there's always a concern related to uh, stormwater runoff yeah, yeah. Uh, that we would prefer that to be in place and for them to have the required water quality, water uh, retention area um, that may have more a greater impact than necessarily the tree safe area that we sort of condition under. Uh, condition number eight. All right, so I'll entertain a, I'll entertain a motion, on uh, RZ fourteen dash nineteen. Mr. Chairman, I don't know if we close the public hearing. Oh, I just the public to hearing is closed. Uh, I'm, you know, we have a big crowd. I think we handle this <laughs> pretty well. <laughs> um, public hearing is closed. We've any questions? Any more questions for anybody? All right, so I'm ready to, we're ready to entertain a motion for RZ-14-19. I'll make a motion to approve RZ-14-19. Second. Uh, any discussion? Well, do we want to talk about how to deal with that, con the staff conditions um, as far as that aid or just leave it as is with the recommendation with the um, staff recommended condition number eight, the tree save? There's is your, is your motion to clarify the motion. So I guess there are two ways you can ask. First, I made the motion to amend the motion to include certain staff conditions, or you can make a motion to a second motion, which we would then have to deal with first. So I don't. You know, I was looking for a point of clarification whether his motion included that included or not. Included staff recommendations okay. as, as as written. As, as stated. Okay. So so the motion to be clarify. The motion is to approve RZ-14-919 with the nine staff recommendations as currently written. And we have a second on that, so we're I'd, I'd, I'd like to make a motion um, to well, remove uh, actually the mo number eight. The motion is, uh, has already been made. It's been seconded. But he can he could ask. He could ask for an uh, amendment. amendment to the amendment. motion okay. that right. would have to be... Yes, uh, we dealt with three, four, we deal with first. Correct, and accepted right. by the initial, yeah. uh, right. the, the commissioner who made the there motion two, initially. There are two ways to do it. You can ask for a friendly amendment, ask the person who made the motion, you know, to, to and, and already heard, so it said no. Okay. So you can make another motion to amend, you know, which I'm hearing yes. you say. I'd like to make a motion to amend uh, Commissioner Francois's motion. And, and, and is that and to the, the motion to amend would be to remove Condition number eight. 
Okay, so we have a motion to amend to remove con staff recommendation condition number eight. Do I have a second on that one? I'll second, second it. I'll okay. second it. Okay. So we have a motion, a second. Any discussion on the motion to amend, which is the removal of staff condition number eight? Is there any more discussion on that? Okay, so that's what we're going to vote on first is. And then essentially if uh, Commissioner Franco will be accepting of that friendly amendment, then I... No, no, it wasn't a friendly oh, amendment. Oh, it wasn't a friendly amendment? It was an amendment. Okay. To, it, was a, an, it was a motion to amend. Okay. I think we tried and there was a mistake. Yeah, oh, okay. we tried and it didn't work, so we did a motion to amend. Yeah. Well, Robert's rules are wonderful, aren't they? <laughs> 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 Who wrote Page that? 246. Uh, so we have a, a mo the first thing we're going to vote on is a motion to amend, which eliminates staff condition number eight. We have a motion, we have a second, we have no more discussion. Uh, all in favor of, of, that, of the motion to amend, which removes staff condition number eight, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Okay, so now we're going to vote on, we have a motion and a second to recommend uh, to the City Council approval of RZ 14-919 as amended, which takes out con staff condition number eight. Any more discussion on that? No. All in favor of that, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so bottom line is we got this without condition number eight. <laughs> yes. Well, Sorry, was, you, that's good. It no, just moved good. a little fast. That's okay. okay. That's procedurally, we change that. Procedurally, that was good. Thank you all. We appreciate it. Good luck, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> What's the price point of these houses? Out of Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Any discussion? All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Okay, we're going to Now you can ask. <laughs> no, I need.